One of the things I think we all see goalies do these days is get caught moving too much. Whether they're going up and down, moving too much off their angles, and getting lost in regards to where they are in the net, causing bad goals and bad positioning. There are some skating drills you can practice by yourself, you don't need a shooter, to help you simplify your movements when the puck is in the zone. As you can see here, I have five cones that form five different angles or lanes. Start on one side, have your stick outside the cone. This will help you maintain your depth as you practice. Make short shuffle steps to each cone, holding your depth, staying low in your stance at the same height, and always having your toes face up ice facing the shooter. The more you do this, you won't even need to look down. You'll be able to look straight ahead, follow your shooter, and not have to look at your feet, and always know where you are on your net. One of the components of that drill, Mike, is also the sound of it, to me as a coach, because I can hear the beginning and end of each of those strides, and that's what I want to see the goalies do as the play comes into the zone and they're tracking it. I don't want them just to be kind of a wet fish moving around. I want a beginning and an end, a beginning and an end, signifying that they are relocating on their angle. Now, as a contrast to that, we have a second crease movement drill that gets into more of a flow type movement. And the difference from how this would have been taught before is somebody passes laterally from spot A to spot B, you'd open your hips and you'd go to a straight line. And it was brought to my attention recently that, you know, when you do that, Joe, you're only centered when you arrive. Um, I used to think, hey, that's a quick sprint. I'm going to get over there and get in the position I want to be. But now it's taught differently. Now there's a little bit more of an emphasis on getting centered earlier and then getting depth if it's allowed. So show this drill. The other thing, Mike, too, is I think we always used to teach the start of a movement a lot. Our emphasis was on pushing off, pushing off, and we kind of ignored or avoided how you stop. And a lot of goalies would stop in a snowplow. Now there's a little bit more of an emphasis on stopping on the proper foot, anticipating where you're likely to go next. So take it away. A lot of times you'll see in a game, a pass will be made across the width of the rink, causing the goalie to move a greater distance than the distance we showed before on the five shuffle steps or five lanes that we had earlier. Like Joe was mentioning, he learned going in a straight line and arriving at the center of the net right when he got to where the shooter was shooting. The problem is, as he was moving towards the shooter, he didn't quite have the angle in case that shooter decided to shoot early or maybe take a one-timer. One way we can solve this is by our skating motion from left to right or right to left. And what we like to use is what they call a C-step. Now, there's many goalie coaches and they all can call it different things, but I think C-step makes the most logical sense where you're grabbing the lane or angle first and then working on trying to get depth and challenging your shooter. So basically you can practice that by starting at one cone on one side of the net and moving to the other side like it's a rink wide pass. The first thing you want to move is your head, your eyes. You want to see where you're going. Is this the best player in the league? Is he a righty or a lefty? There's a lot of things you can keep in mind before you C-step across. So you turn your head, you make a C with your foot. By doing that, you open up your body and you're almost already square to where this shot is coming from. So as I go, I turn my head, C-step, drive over and stop. I'm out on my net, I'm right on the shooter, and I'm in good position on my feet.